Alrighty guys, welcome to part two. Um, this is probably going to be the last video of my Shredder mask making series. Um, I'm pretty much done with the costume. There's a couple of things I need to tweak, like the the claws and the gauntlets. I might uh, make a video on that stuff because I've been doing a lot of uh, 3D printing type stuff lately. Um, I know a lot of channels have been starting to move towards 3D printing as far as cosplay props and weapons and stuff like that. Um, I won't be doing too much of that. I'm more or less using the 3D printer as a tool. I have one. I've been using it for a couple of props and stuff. But um, I'll show you guys kind of my process for some of the other projects I've worked on. I made a couple of cool props for my costume too. I'll show you guys how I made those. And uh, yeah, anyways guys, uh, enjoy the video and thanks again for watching. Alright guys, so we're going to wait for this other, the, for the eyes to dry kind of. I made a couple little mistakes there, but it's no big deal. We'll just go back with a little bit of black paint and we'll fix that up. So now, we're going to be working on this other part here. So the reason why I'm not using paper on this one is because I'm going to be moving it around a lot uh, to get different angles and get the right uh, spray pattern that I want. Uh, so it's got to be a little bit more durable and paper will just kind of fall apart after a while. So now for this next part here, you want to get, want to get several things. Okay, so first off, you're going to want to get some shop towels. You're going to want gloves. And then um, I like these two. These two kinds of spray paint. These are Rust-Oleum. Black stainless steel uh, and dark steel. Um, we're not going to. These are kind of get the dark, the dark tones and the mid tones. We're going to do the highlights later on with um, rub and buff. But uh, yeah, anyways, you're going to want to use gloves for this part. You probably should use a respirator too, but uh, I don't feel like getting it. I don't even know where it is actually. So whatever. First we're going to do a coat of the dark steel. This is going to get a lot of our, uh, dark, our dark tones and then uh, we're going to rub on the dark steel which is a little bit lighter tone which will give us some of our mids. It's kind of hard to see because it's a very dark uh, metallic color. This is going to move around and catch the light see if you can see any dead spots. That's why I like using the flat black primer because it doesn't really catch light. Okay, I think for our purposes it looks good. We're going to let this dry for a couple minutes. Um, before we do this other part. With this cans, it says to clean the nozzles. It, I still have them clogged even after I clean them. So you might every once in a while have to soak them in acetone or just throw them away and get a new can. They're like four bucks. I don't know if it's worth the trouble or not. Um, so yeah, we're gonna let that dry for just a little bit while we uh, go do some other stuff. And uh, you don't wanna do them right away because otherwise like the solvents in this one, when you're wiping it, will just wipe off the previous coat. So you wanna give it a little bit of time to, to dry and set. I had uh, tried putting that coat with the lighter uh, dark steel, which is lighter than this one. Um, but the problem is I didn't wait long enough. I only wait about 10, 15 minutes, and uh, I probably should wait longer because I didn't wipe off some of the other coats. So I just kind of went back over it, and then I let it sit for a few hours. I went to work and came back. Um, it's been about six or seven hours, and it should be fully dry by now. Um, it's still, I think it takes like 24 hours to cure. But I think for our purposes, it should be good enough. So we're gonna try this again. All you're doing is just doing a really light uh, brushing of uh, this lighter metal color on top of this one. So give us some nice little mid tones, and then we're gonna go back with um, rub and buff. And we're gonna put another the highlights and stuff, kind of just buff things out. And we're gonna add a little bit of uh, black acrylic paint and some of the darker cracks and stuff, and that should really make things pop. So just real light. I don't know if you can tell too well on the camera here, but uh, it's going to help a little bit with uh, some of these highlights here, where it kind of just leaves some of the darker spots in the in the back, and then it adds a little more highlight and depth to the top part. I think that looks fairly good enough for now. We're going to let that kind of sit and dry a little bit. Alright guys, I found this, I forgot I had this one too. This is a, uh, a different kind of silver. It's just a regular Crayola metallic silver. It's a little bit brighter than this one. It, it should get a pretty nice uh, extra tone to the middle. And we'll, yeah, let's, just, let's just see what happens. Well, that's a uh, side I haven't done yet. And this one gives a little bit more of a brighter shine to certain areas. All right.
Okay, cool. So I think it looks pretty good for now. I'm just gonna let this sit overnight, and uh, in the morning I'll add a little more of the I'll, I'll, I'll add the rub and buff, and then we'll just uh, go from there. I let this dry overnight with the uh, with the other wash of silver spray paint, and it looks pretty dang decent. I mean, I like the way it looks now, but. We're going to apply a little bit of this stuff. This is called Rub and Buff. Um, you can get this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Actually, you, you can only get it at Hobby Lobby as far as I can find. Uh, Michael's, they don't carry it anymore. They have some other metallic wax stuff, but um, I haven't tried that stuff or heard anybody try that other stuff, so I just don't know what that other, what it does. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's about six bucks. Uh, you can order it on Amazon too, and um, it actually works pretty good. The Silver Leaf especially. I bought a new... Uh, of this stuff but I still have some left over I was just running a little bit low in my costume anyway so it's a, it's a wax metallic finish so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little bit and then once it's dry you can uh, use another clean part of the cloth and you can buff it out really well and it gives a really nice shine um, I'm putting on top of this because it's a little bit brighter than the silver that we used on that uh, from the last spray paint can and so it should help create some uh, nice highlights and some dimension and it like I said, once it once it buffs out, it buffs out really nice. Okay, watch. I'll I'll do one side and then I'll show you. I don't know if you can tell too much, but it's got a little bit of more shine to it. And now we're gonna use a clean side, and we're just gonna polish it. I don't know, you can't really tell too well on the camera, but uh, the shine coming off of the light onto like, the certain peaks and stuff like that is a lot crisper and sharper. I think it gives like a not as much toned down uh, me metal look. It gives like a lot more bright and shiny, like silverish polish. You can't really tell too well on camera. It's too bad for it too. But uh, yeah, anyways, that's my process, and that's what I'm gonna continue doing. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna add a little dirt and grime inside these cracks here, um, into some of the deeper and dark areas. The dark steel metallic uh, spray paint I use does give some nice uh, darkness to it, but it's not exactly black or like a uh, dirt color. So anyways, I got uh, ivory black and raw umber. These are just some cheap uh, acrylic paints I got from uh, Michaels, I think. Anyways, you don't need a lot. It's just to make a little bit of a dirt kind of mix. You don't want completely black because that just looks kind of, I don't know, like oil or something like that. Unless that's what you're kind of going for, it's just a straight solid black oily look. Um, yeah, add a little bit of water. You don't need a whole lot of water, just to make it a little bit thin so it gets in some of these deep cracks and uh, cuts and scratches in the surface. And so now for this part, we're just going to use the rest of this rag, and then also have a damp uh, tablecloth. Since it's acrylic paint, it's water soluble, so this will help you out uh, a lot of the excess off uh, on the top of it, on the top surface areas, while leaving some of the bottom cracks and crevices, still kind of thing. And so anyways, you just dirty it up. So we're going to do one half of this, this thing at the same time, at a time. Put all that on, just gonna clean it off a little bit. You're not gonna completely clean it off, just enough to make it seem like it was something dirty that got washed off. Which technically it was, but whatever. Okay, you can kind of see where there's still a little bit left over. That's cool, that's exactly what we wanted. Alright, so now let's do the other side. Okay. So, let's just take off this and we'll see what we need to fix next. I think that looks pretty cool. 
I just attached some straps to it, just some Velcro and uh, hot glue seems to work. I uh, roughed up the surface though with uh, some 100 grit sandpaper. Um, and that always seems to help uh, make the hot glue stick better. Then I like to do this thing here where I get the hot glue around the edges and I seal up all of that because, uh, I don't know, for some reason just kind of like a weld, it seems to hold it a lot stronger and a lot better. But, uh, I mean, so far it's holding pretty tight. You don't have to use any other kind of special glue, I actually use regular uh, hot temp. Uh, uh, hot glue. And so to protect it, I got two different kinds of Mod Podge. I got the matte finish and I have a gloss finish. So the gloss I'm going to use on the metal part because I want to have a little more shine to it. And then the matte I'm going to keep on this thing because I want that kind of dull and st uh, to... And this stuff is white when you first start doing it, um, but it turns clear. And it provides a pretty good coat. I don't know if you're making a helmet or anything else too, but uh, it definitely helps with the fumes from the spray paint if you're in a rush. And you just want to coat it and protect it real quick. Um, that's one thing I discovered because I was walking around uh, this one convention in my red hood helmet and uh, I had just spray painted and it got pretty high off the fumes, even though it was a couple of days later. Um, but if you go back and spray uh, coat it with a Mod Podge, um, that really helps to eliminate a lot of those extra fumes. It's pretty, pretty cool, pretty handy if you're in a rush. Um, naturally, over time, the fumes from the spray paint will just go away too, but um, like I said, if you're in a rush, it's good in a pinch because it just dries over, uh, I think, a couple hours, three or four. Not 100% on that one, but it's cool. I'm going to rinse the brush out into some regular old water, and then we can apply the matte finish. Now let's let that sit and dry, and we're, we're done with that. That's going to wrap up this video guys. Uh, this is also the last video in this series I'm doing right now because my mask is done and so is my costume as you saw. If you want to see some additional pictures and footage that we took when we were out shooting, uh, please follow me on Instagram at the ADD artist. I'll put a link down below as well. Um, I'll have more current pictures of like stuff and projects I'm currently working on on that as well. As for uh, this channel, stay tuned. I'm going to have some more videos coming up for you guys. I got a few more projects to work on. Uh, redoing with Casey Jones mask and I'm redoing uh, my red hooded helmet and a few other projects as well um, anyways guys thank you all so much I have a hundred subscribers right now and you guys are all very awesome I appreciate you and uh, anyways guys thank you so much <laughs> yes <laughs> no not like a bat <laughs> I don't know how to use a sword <laughs> <sighs> well,